Hi everyone and welcome to my next video tutorial which will be on setting up MFA or multi-factor authentication within our Django web app specifically for our Django admin page. Now we're going to be following all the steps that are outlined in this article on my blog. I will be sure for those of you that want to read it this way, I will ensure to go ahead and add this link in the description below. So make sure you've got that in place. Another important point to bear in mind is before we go ahead and, and any further, make sure that you go ahead and download and set up the Google Authenticator app on your smartphone, since we will be integrating that, integrating it within our Django web app. So make sure you've got that all in place before we go ahead and move on further. Right, so let's actually go ahead and get started. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to install a package called Django OTP. So we can head over to this link here and we can see that this is basically a package which includes a pluggable framework to add two-factor authentication to Django using one-time passwords. But what we're going to do is we're going to modify this slightly because we need to install this Django OTP package, but we also need to make use of the QR code field. So it's going to be a bit unique the way that we install it. So pay close attention here. So what we can do is we can head over to our application now, what I can show you in the meantime is my application as is, so it's very simple, uh, like always. It's just a basic app that just says, hello world, nothing more to it, and that's all you need, okay? So a very simple Django project. So I have my server running here, I'm using the VS Code terminal here, and I'm just gonna zoom in to make it clearer for you guys. And let me just close, end it. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do now. So we can go ahead and copy this here, this package and paste it in. Now you just need to add one final parameter here and that is QR code, okay? Because we need to make use of the QR code field. So go ahead and install that. Okay, make sure as always you're in your virtual environment, very important. Uh, it's good to minimize the number of packages that you install globally on your system. So make sure you've set that up accordingly. Great, so type CLS and that will clear everything up. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on my server again just to make sure we don't have any issues or whatnot. Okay, uh, that seems fine. There we go, oh, I just wanna zoom back in. And if we were to refresh, everything's good. Okay, so what we need to do now is we want to configure our multi-factor authentication. And to do this, we need to add in the required Django OTP configurations. So basically the apps that come in with this Django OTP package. So I'm going to head over to my settings.py file just want to minimize this here. And we can head over to installed apps. So what I'm going to do here is I already have some packages, so just ignore that. I'm just going to go ahead and add in a Django underscore OTP followed by Django underscore OTP dot plugins dot OTP underscore TOTP. And be sure to add in a comma. So you need to add this here, add this, and add this. Okay, so like I said, ignore the rest. That's just from my basic project. You just need to add this within your settings.py file. So make sure you've got that all in place. Now, once you've done that, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add in middleware. So we can scroll down to our middleware, which is just here. And we want to add in the Django OTP middleware to our middleware. Now I prefer to add this just below the authentication middleware. This would be the best place to ensure we don't have uh, errors. So right here, just below authentication middleware, I'm just gonna go ahead and say Django underscore OTP dot middleware dot OTP middleware. Now remember to add your comma at the end and it's very important that you type it in exactly as I have here because it is case sensitive. So just to reiterate it, Django underscore OTP dot middleware dot OTP middleware and everything is case sensitive. Okay, so this is the middleware that we will need to actually make use of this package. All right, now let's move ahead. So now we can head over to our URLs.py here, our main URLs, and we need to go ahead and import a few URLs here to our URL patterns list. So just below here, include, or I'll pass in our main URLs.py file, we need to add a few things. So I'm gonna head over to the blog here, just to make things easier for us. 
So here by step four, we need to add the following code here before our urls.py patterns list. So that is just before this. So I'm going to add that in. So we can copy this here and paste that in. Now, just to give you a bit of clarity here. So we are he he here, we are importing our default Django user model. Then we're importing a few models here that pertain to our OTP package here that we just installed. So we can see here, this is from the OTP uh, models. So if we are importing the admin site, the TOTP device model and the TOTP device admin. So we're adding all these models from our app, Django OTP. All right, so that's what we're basically installing here. All right. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and create an OTP admin class so that we can register the user and TOTP device model in Django's administration or admin panel. So that's the next thing that we actually need to go ahead and set up. Right, so let's go ahead and create this OTP admin class and also register the necessary models. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna add some space here. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna say class. Actually, one more space will do it. So class, and I'm gonna say OTP admin, and we're going to inherit this OTP uh, admin site here. So we're going to inherit that. So OTP admin site, and we can just say pass. Okay, so we don't need to actually pass anything through here, but now comes the important part. So what we need to do now is, I'm just gonna declare a variable called admin site, and I'm going to set that to the OTP admin class that we just defined. And I'm just going to name it something. So I'm going to call it OTP admin. Perfect. Now, what I need to do is register my model. So remember, we need to ensure that we register our user model because that's going to be plugged and connected to this Django OTP app. So basically, each of our users will have their unique you could say multi-factor authentication key. So we need to ensure that they are registered according to this package, which is Django OTP. So now I can just say admin underscore site, uh, site dot register. So this is very similar to what we do in, in our admin.py file. We're just doing it here. And we're going to say user and then admin underscore site dot register. And this is going to be to TP device and TOTP device admin. Okay, so we need to just register these models. That's all we're doing here. We, re we are registering all the models that are provided for us from the Django OTP package. That's all we're doing here. So make sure you've got all this set up and ready to go. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and actually migrate these database files. So here in our debug console, we can turn off our server, make sure in your virtual environment, and I'm just gonna zoom in here for you. And you can just say python manage.py migrate. So go ahead and set up your migrations. Okay, so in my case, I already went ahead and pre-tested it, but you should see a few lines here of the initial migrations. Perfect. Now we're not done yet here. We need to go ahead and create a super user so we can actually log into our Django admin page and see these new models from the Django OTP package. So I'm just going to actually zoom out here for you and say python manage.py create super user. So we just want to create a super user. So if you already have one, you don't need to worry. Um, you can just ignore this step. So I'm just going to create a super user called test admin, email blank, add in a password, and enter that password in again. And there we go. Just be sure after you've done that to go ahead and run your server. Okay, perfect. And what we can do now is head over to the Django admin page and we can log in with that admin user that we just specified. So go ahead and add in that admin user's credentials. Right, so once you've entered in your admin credentials, you can go ahead and log in. Okay, so now we can see our TOTP devices. So this is based on what we went ahead and registered. And we can also see our app OTP, so Django OTP. So let's go ahead and click on TOTP devices. We can go ahead and add a TOTP device, which is essentially our MFA device or our virtual device to be more accurate. And we're going to have to enter in a few things here. 
Now the first thing we need to set is the user. So we want this to be set to that test admin user. So this is the super user that we just created. And this user is now going to have um, multi-factor authentication. And now we need to add the name. So I'm going to call this admin MFA. So this will be the name of the device. So just bear in mind that the user that I'm selecting is going to be test admin, which we just searched and selected. Now you can scroll down and what we need to do here is we need to set the tolerance here. Now, essentially when these packages get updated, there is a slight uh, sort of difference in the timing that they set manually in the package. So basically what I mean by this is you won't get the complete accurate time. So you need to adjust the tolerance a little bit. So I'm going to set it to about 90. You can go, of course go ahead and set it higher. Now the reason for doing this is because if you don't set this up to a high enough number, you're going to get the invalid token error. Now if you still get this invalid token error, I would suggest bumping up the tolerance just a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we can now go ahead and save this. There we go. So test admin is set. Now we can go ahead and scan the QR code, which is the field that we went ahead and installed with our Django OTP package. So you can click on QR code. Go ahead and scan your QR code. So I'm just going to get my phone and scan it. So go ahead and do just that. So I'm going to scan it. There we go. And what you can do now is log out. Go ahead and say login again. Okay, and you can stay here on the admin page. Next thing we need to do is something quite unusual, but we need to do it. So you can type in Google list of TZ, so time zone, database time zones, and you can go ahead and say search. And you can click here on Wikipedia here. So list of TZ database time zones. So Wikipedia isn't really a good source of information, but it does the job for this, all right. So we can click on this here. And you just wanna search for your location and you just wanna check where you are. So this is very important actually. So I'm just going to look for my location where I'm currently at. Look for your location. So I'm going to demonstrate how it would be if it were just by me. So oh, it's going to take forever. So I'm uh, Asia Dubai. So this is where I'm, me. So I'm just going to copy that there. So this is essentially the, let me scroll up. What's this called? This is the uh, TZ database name. So you need this. So I'm going to copy what I had there and here by time zone, which states UTC, I'm just going to add in mine. So mine is Asia Dubai. So you can of course um, add in your time zone. So once you've got that in place, okay, once you've got your own time zone, so make sure you don't put the same as mine because it really depends where you are in the world. So this will also have some impact on what we do. Okay, so make sure you've got that in place. Now, once you've done that, we can head over to our application. Now, do bear in mind where you make this setting is in settings.py. So this will be the time zone that you go ahead and set. Right, so the last thing we need to do is you're probably wondering how do we actually log in with the token? But the Django admin is not showing us this. It's only showing a username and a password still. Even though on our uh, Google Authenticator app, it is showing codes and we're not be able to enter this. So to solve this, head over to urls.py. And remember, we went ahead and assigned this variable admin site to our OTP admin. So essentially, when we install the Django OTP package, it, it goes ahead and, in, and takes in the default Django admin page and adds an extra field for us to enter in our OTP token. And that is what we are doing here. We are essentially overriding our default Django admin with this custom-made OTP admin page which has an extra field for the OTP token. Now, all we need to do is set this variable admin site to our default admin page here. So I've set it as admin underscore site. And here the default one for Django is admin dot. So I'm going to now make use of this variable admin site and just switch it like so. So it's admin underscore site like follows dot URLs. So once that in that is in place, okay, you can go ahead and refresh and restart your server. It does it usually automatically, but just for clarity, go ahead and just restart your server. Once you're done, you can refresh this page and you can now enter in your details. So go ahead and enter your username, your password and your OTP token. So go ahead and enter those things in. Once you've entered that in, go ahead and quickly log in. So I'm running on against the time here. So go ahead and log in. 
and there you go. So you can now see that you are logged into your Django admin page more secure, in a more secure manner, should I say, now forcing you to make use of an OTP token. So let's go ahead and test this one more time. So we can go ahead and log out, log in again, go ahead and do it again. So test admin in my case and in my password and go ahead and enter in your OTP token. So I'm just gonna enter one of mine. Uh, and there we go, working perfectly as it should. So there we have it. So that's how we can go ahead and log in to Django securely with OTP tokens. Now, if for some reason you don't like this, you can do two things. So first of all, head over to TOTP devices. You can click on it here, uh, unassign that user that device. Okay, it's gonna show th that the user, that device was removed and uh, this message will come up. So that's fine. Now you can switch to the default Django admin if you wish. Just go ahead and enter in a dot. I'd recommend just going to your home page and to your admin page and log out, log in again, and there we go. It's been removed. Okay, so that's how you can go ahead and make use of multifactorial syndication for your um, Django admin page. All right, so that's that. Thank you for watching, and as always, guys, thank you for the support.